Can the Miami Hurricanes ever become what the Michigan Wolverines are right now? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first or second listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcast. We're free on YouTube, and we're part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So uh, I know my guy Raymond Borg and I, and Raymond joins us now. Uh, we both we both picked Washington to win last night. Whoops. However, despite the fact that I lost a little money on the game, Ray, I was still really impressed with how Michigan was able to pull off that victory. And I'm sure Mario Cristobal was as well when we look at 303 team rushing yards, two running backs on Michigan with over 100 yards and two touchdowns apiece, a defensive line that made Michael Penix's life a living hell all evening long. Like that's that's what Miami wants to be. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was uh the game was uh su- a little bit surprising, but you yeah, Chrome and Edwards, I think I just those plays that that were drawn up by the OC was incredible. Pulling the offensive lineman. Crumman Edwards just would stop, bump off the offensive line, find an opening, and it was gone. Um, that first quarter was incredible. That's exactly what Mario wants to do is get that type of offensive line, get those type of backs. That's a system he wants to run and have a strong defense because they really, really hammer panics. He just was panicking. He wanted to go. He always wanted to throw right to a deep pass, missed wide open receivers, Um ESPN was, you know, basically breaking down his film and how, you know, wide open here, wide open there, tight end, running back. He just was played the worst game of, of the year. Yeah, he was bad because I, I think I think he was just um, so afraid of Michigan's pass. He was in his head. Like I think it was in his head that I've got about a second and a half to throw the football. Sometimes it wasn't even true, but I think he was seeing those ghosts. Yeah, absolutely. Also, what hurt the Washington tremendously was Johnson being hurt. He got hurt against Texas. Yeah. And then he got his ankles rolled up on the offensive line. They were never the same. While he was in the game, he may be your best back. And I've always said, well, this guy at 8% is still there in my backup running back. But not, I don't believe that. Not when you got a busted wheel. You're yeah. you're hurting the team. And then you need to find other ways to win. And then they basically just do the the defense will spin their ears back and say, we're going to go after the quarterback full bore. And they did. And they tore him up. And that was the end. But at least they had a comeback. And that Huskies defense – yeah. was really good. Um, it's just the offenses couldn't get it together. But it was a fairly entertaining game. Little lulls, interesting third quarter. Not classic, but Michigan did the job, and they won. And it was a crazy season for Michigan because, like, multiple off-field scandals. You know, their their head coach gets suspended for multiple games, including the Ohio State rivalry game. Like, I, I had very few doubts throughout the season that Michigan was one of, if not the very best team in the entire country, even though I I did pick Washington to win the game last night throughout the regular season, Michigan was the team. I thought this is, you know, the best, most talented team in the country. I don't know why they were stealing, stealing signals because they probably didn't need to. They probably would have still been in this spot regardless of the Connor Stallion stuff. And and it's an interesting journey, uh, Raymond, for Jim Harbaugh. There's a couple different angles we could talk about with Harbaugh. I want to do the Miami comparison stuff first. Uh, And, I'm not saying Mario Cristobal's Jim Harbaugh. I'm not saying he ever will be, okay? But we talk about the blueprint, that they play the sort of football and they've recruited the type of players that Mario Cristobal recruits. Michigan follows that blueprint when it comes to building up both lines of scrimmages and building from the inside out, right? You also have the fact that Jim Harbaugh, like Mario Cristobal, is a former player and alumnus of the school where he coaches, right? Mario's a Miami man, like Harbaugh is a Michigan man. And Michigan fans did have to be pretty patient with that process, right? I mean, Harbaugh always had Michigan relevant, but for many years, couldn't get over the hump, couldn't beat Ohio State, got embarrassed in a lot of those games, right? When they started to get to the point where they were a playoff caliber team, they couldn't get over the hump in the playoffs. And then nine years into the Harbaugh era, 
Uh, I know no Miami fan wants to wait nine years, but I'd rather wait nine years than you know, 100 years uh, to win a championship again if that's what it takes. So nine years in, Harbaugh finally gets to the top of the mountain with his alma mater, which must be an awesome feeling. And that's a feeling Mario Cristobal would like to have. So at least, uh, you know, again, coach for coach, they're not the same guy, not saying they are, but Mario Cristobal would certainly like to win that way, Ray. When you look at all the five stars on the offensive line and the defensive line that he's brought in in these last couple of recruiting classes, that's what Mario Cristobal wants his team to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And it's not going to take nine years because Harbaugh didn't have the transfer portal like we do now to bring in right. the players. So it's not going to take nine years, but it did take time and get the right people he wanted to and the right coaching staff and to get everything to work together. He made some mistakes. He also lost the games like he would lose to like Indiana a couple of years ago. He lost to yeah. Michigan State a couple of times here and there. So there was those, he always would seem to trip up on something. It's like, well, Jimmy's going to make a mistake somewhere down the line and they'll eventually lose Ohio State. But then they start putting in the talent. They brought in the right offensive coaches. Um, and they were just able to finally dominate the Big Ten. It's going to be interesting next year when you get USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon now in the Big Ten. That's going to make things uh, a little bit different. And then you've got Penn State still floating around there, but it does take time. And we're a little bit impatient, you know, uh, especially when you get to my age. You wonder, you know, are you going to see another national championship before you leave the planet? Yeah. Um, like the truth teller once said, he's not wrong. I'm not far behind him. Um, but I think he's got it in the right direction. I think next year is a huge year for them, but I think he's building it the way he wants to build it. I, but unlike, but Harbaugh also comes from a coaching family. His dad, his brother's success with the Ravens is incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so he has that coaching gene in him where Mario was an offensive lineman, Cuban immigrant from his parents. And then he worked his way up in the coaching ranks, but he was never an offensive coordinator. He was never a defensive coordinator, but he was a heck of a recruiter, a heck of a player and knows how to run a system. The question is going to be is, is can they bring in the quarterback and will he let the offense coordinator do what he needs to do or will they have the talent to do what the offense coordinator wants to do? I'm not ready to hang the offense coordinator like the majority of the fan base. Um, it's just I don't think he has confidence in the players he has right now or they need more time to develop. And I'm willing to be patient to go out there and instead of getting smoked by 40 points, where we kind of saw that with Diaz where let's just try it anyway and they weren't ready and then – Middle second quarter, like, well, I guess I might as well go outside and mow the lawn because the game's over. <laughs> Had some of those for sure. But I'm glad you brought up the quarterback position because that's going to be one of the most important things in bridging that gap, right? Because Miami has not had, and I don't necessarily think they have right now, someone who is going to be J.J. McCarthy, right? Because even though he, he didn't have to do a whole lot last night outside of take care of the football, but J.J. McCarthy is a former blue chip recruit was a former four-star guy out of Illinois in high school, uh, very capable quarterback who doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and he can hurt you with his wheels as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to hope that maybe, you know, Jakari Brown or Emery Williams or Poffenbarger or whoever, uh, Judd Anderson, who had Luke Nickel in a couple of years, right? I'd like to think Miami can get a guy like that, but like you said, you've got to find that quarterback because, you know, Michigan would not have won a championship had they had, you know, Tyler Van Dyke throwing 13 interceptions on their team this year, right? They had to have the quarterback to help them get there. That's a really important thing, like you said, Miami needs into bridging that gap. So hopefully we can settle that. Now, the question that everybody's asking about Jim Harbaugh now, Raymond, is, you know, nine years at Michigan, finally gets his championship. Uh, he's been in the NFL before, you know, had lost to his brother in a Super Bowl about a decade ago, Right. So now everyone's wondering, does Harbaugh, there's been a lot of rumors. Paul Feinbaum has said he's definitely going back to the NFL. We've seen him linked to a few teams like the Chargers and, and the Raiders. Maybe the Atlanta Falcons might be interested in him. They've got a coaching vacancy now. Harbaugh's the king of Michigan right now, Raymond. I mean, he, he can do no wrong now in Ann Arbor. They stood behind him with these scandals. They obviously stand behind him now that he's won a championship. That's where he went to school. He is a legend in his own town. Or does he need to scratch that itch to try and do what Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer and Pete Carroll did to be coaches who have won national championships in college and Super Bowls in the NFL? Do you think that itch is just going to be too much for him not to want to scratch it? Um, it I would call more of his ego. Now, Jimmy Johnson left because he wanted yeah. to make more money with the Cowboys. Yeah. He had issues right. with Tad Foot and a couple other folks as well, too. And Barry Switzer just happened to land into what Jimmy Johnson oh, yeah. left. Okay, and then he destroyed it a couple of years later with the Cowboys with point eight and one to get traded. 
That's yeah. how bad Switzer was. He would have yeah. to go back, talk about a, a most overrated coach in college football history. Oh, that would sure. be him. Yeah. Um, he is, his ego is huge. And I guess in this, in the coaching business, it has to be specifically with the amount of money being in a way you have to run things. One thing is with Harbaugh is when he was coaching the Niners, his biggest rival was my team, the Seahawks. And he's not a fan of Pete Carroll. He hates Pete Carroll because Pete Carroll's won two or three USC titles and he's yeah. had success with the Seahawks. And every time someone counts them out, like a couple of years ago, he finds a way to get into the playoffs. He does. He just finds a way to win and he keeps the players motivated. I think he, I would personally, I think, I think he should stay at Michigan. Basically, look at Schnellenberger. That's the million. Look at Schnellenberger leaving. He regretted that to the end yeah. of his life. Um, you, you don't want to leave a good thing, but I think he really wants that Super Bowl title. And I think he wants just teams available. I think San Diego is not a good fit. The ownership's a sniff situation. Raiders, Al Dave Jr. is not, they, or, or Jim Davis or whatever. Baby Davis is not the is Mark not Davis. the owner he wants to work for. His former OC was just fired from there because they went with the players because they didn't like him. Um, haven't heard a word about the Falcons wanting Harbaugh. Um, I think Arthur <laughs> Blank, the owner, former Home Depot um, CFO, I believe was his title. He wants to win now. I've heard more. He wants Belichick potentially. Mm. The Patriots could open up their job. You've got the Carolina. I think a really good fit could be the Carolina Panthers. Well, he could have full control. He's got the quarterback, um, a lot of draft picks, a good mark, you know, a good TV market in Charlotte, a lot of very rich owner who will let him do what he wants back off. He's already, the Carolina Panthers owner is already in trouble. We're full of throwing a drink at a Jacksonville fan. Yeah. Yeah. So he's in real, he's in PR, he's in, he's in really bad PR shape right now. And I expect the league to do a little more than just the fine. I have a feeling and more of a warning. Don't do that again. Um, but I think, I think he will probably bolt. Um, I've already spoken to a couple of friends of mine that are Michigan fans and they expect him to leave. And they're like, we're happy. He's got us title. He's got us back up here. Yeah. Um, but they think he's going to leave. And I think he'll leave within days. It won't be long. Yeah. I think he's going to leave in a couple of days, which is going to make things interesting on who's going to be his replacement. I think they'll hire from within. I, I I would I would put my money on uh, their offensive coordinator Sharon Moore. Yes. I think that I think he's probably the one being groomed. And you know I think when, when you've got a, a successful coaching regime like that, like there there are sometimes like when you know if if you've got a, a coach who gets fired and then you promote from within, like the the Randy Shannon thing, it's like well why are you doing that? But in the case of when you got a super, I mean it's like Ryan Day the way that he took over. Uh, took over from Urban uh, Liar. That that kind of made sense to to promote from within, right? If for I think now, in Michigan, yeah, yeah. And now, well, for now, and now yeah. they're starting to question yeah. if it basically was all yeah. his talent. And he can't recruit the kind of type of talent he needs. I mean, he's pulling yeah. quarterbacks from the transfer portal. He's kicking our one of our last starting quarterback up to Syracuse. So true. I think they will hire from within, and, and will that work long term? The time yeah. will tell. But my biggest question is: is going to be which players will bolt without him or recruits may bolt going, Hey, I can right. to go to Jim be with Jim Harbaugh. And now you're leaving and also can shake up the coaching rankings because you know, some of those assistants will leave. They'll get better jobs. They'll get promotions. So that opens up to other coaches. So it's going to be a huge domino effect, yep. um, especially before the next signing day, which isn't as big as the early signing day, but it will have an effect. And like I said, the portal will kick in. I love it. Well, good stuff, man. I love connecting with you as always, Raymond Borg. We know him uh, as a GA Kane fan. Ray, thank you so much for the time, and I know we'll be catching up again when baseball season heats up. Absolutely. Looking forward to that and the warm weather because it's, it's cold here and rainy horribly. <laughs> so Yeah, it's it's chilly here and rainy. It's like it's like 70 degrees. We're freezing our butts off down here. Yeah, I know. I'm sure you are. I remember <laughs> being growing up there. I know what it's like. So have a great uh, afternoon. We'll talk to everyone next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.